Since we're going to be talking about this species, which is endangered, I thought maybe you could just tell us a little bit about those threats or comparisons to habitat that the red cockaded faces that unfortunately it looks like didn't work out for the ivory bill. Well, in a, in a way, the threats are the same. Um, loss of habitat, uh, increased fragmentation of what's left, so it makes it difficult for birds to move from one place to the other. In the case of the ivory bill, they needed much larger areas, um, and they also needed areas that were really remote. And so they were probably much more susceptible to fragmentation than the red cockade woodpecker. But another component of that is fire mm -hmm. as well. So we don't know a huge amount about the natural history of the ivory bill woodpecker, but it does seem that they were fire dependent. And the red cockade woodpecker is very fire dependent. Um, given the old growth forests that the ivory bill lived in, it could have been that fire was relatively infrequent, but it still reset the ecological succession that allowed ivory bills to exploit the habitat. Um, and again, if fire patterns have changed over millennia, and of course the spread of fire changes when we fragment the habitat because fires just can't continuously burn. So, Th those are exactly the same threats that face red cockaded woodpeckers. Now, red cockaded woodpeckers depend on much more frequent fire. Every two to three years, it's necessary for RCWs to be able to thrive in those habitats. So, that's just an amazing amount of information. I feel like I just read a whole <laughs> book. But there is one really interesting component that I think the general public would like to know about. I mean, they might be thinking, why is it so important to save this bird, other than the obvious reasons? And something I read that really interested me is those cavities can be reused by so many species. I mean, we were talking earlier that bats were found in one. Right. I mean, don't snakes go in there? Tell me a little bit more about the cavities. Yeah, so the cavity is a resource. Um, only the RCWs are capable of excavating a cavity in a living pond. It takes them years to do it because in order to make a cavity in the heartwood, you have to go through the sapwood. Well, the sapwood is producing resin constantly. So they work a little bit and then stop, let all the resin harden, then work a little bit more. Once that cavity is there, heartwood of these old growth pines is like cement. It's, it's unbelievably hard. So that cavity persists for a long time. Lots of other bird species use those cavities. Um, flying squirrels might use those cavities. And when I say use, sometimes they're actually competing with the red cockaded woodpecker for those cavities. Um, but in general, that improves the health of the entire community to have the RCWs there. And, and to me, the most important thing is that you have to have old growth forests to do that. So old growth forests themselves, whether or not you have RCWs or not, are important to a lot of different species. What they do have in common is this mating system called cooperative breeding, where the young birds remain with their parents for a year or longer and actually assist their parents with raising their siblings. And so there is a lot more sociality within these family groups in cooperative breeders than there are in other species. Um, so, but the red cockaded woodpecker is a great example of a species that's been threatened by human activities is a species that we're also able to manage very effectively. So it depends on frequent fire. We can do that with prescribed fire. But it also depended on old growth forests because old growth forests have these old, old pine trees that have been attacked by a fungus that softens the heartwood in the middle of that pine. <laughs> So the red cockaded woodpecker is the only North American woodpecker to excavate its cavities in living pine trees. Some of the rarest birds, you can see them right here on the ranch. I mean, we're caracara is a falcon, quintessentially found in Florida ranches. Very common here. We have about 10 breeding pairs and a big um, and intermittently a large number of non-breeding or juveniles will roost on the ranch. And um, you can certainly see it in the collection. Um, but, you know, a typical caracara will be out here on the territory, you know, a few hundred acres, 
does lots of things, walks around, flips cow patties, picks beetles from underneath them, you know, finds a dead catfish, uh, maybe, you know, finds a calf, that, uh, um, a cow that's just given birth to a calf and, you know, picks its way through the afterbirth. None of this is really pleasant, but it's a lot of food out there for a cara cara. And of course they will also go after injured or um, you know sick animals they will eat them as well so there's a there's a wonderful falcon only found in central florida threatened species you can see it in our collection but if we drive down the road i bet we'll see one now and they're often in these improved pastures in fact they actually have higher densities in the highly managed pastures which are super productive um, you know with more nutrition than they do in the more native grasslands but the juveniles will form huge roosts where they come and spend the night. Um, sometimes some of those roosts have been more than 100 birds. Wow. Um, and we don't really know the function of those roosts. There, there, there's a variety of different ideas. It could be about information sharing, about foraging. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a way to meet potential mates and, right. and figure out who's going to mate where. Because um, these birds are not migratory. Now, some, some species like swallowtail kites form these big roosts right before they migrate. But these birds are year-round residents, mm. uh, so they don't migrate, so it's probably not anything about following individuals to the winter ground. One of the big threats, though, is that many of the pastures are shifting. You know, ranch lands are disappearing as well. Um, and they are either being replaced by development or they're being displaced by more intense monocultural agriculture like sugarcane. Right. Um, so there are still threats of habitat loss, even though this bird seems to thrive in the typical Florida ranch landscape. Mm -hmm.